are back and we have a wonderful, beautiful dragon to get maxing out today in the form of Duo Destruct. Now, is Duo Destruct the best mythical ever? No. But does that matter? No, because the design is cool. But of course, with this E5, the only reason I really decided to go for Duo Destruct so soon was just because, you know, we are getting the mythical update soon and I thought it would be lovely to finally get this boy at E5, which means that now we can max level them if we want to and they can serve as a dragon for some of the light arenas that we get. So, uh, yeah, I, I love Duo Destruct. I don't know if you know, but uh, it does take quite a lot of time <clears throat> to be able to get Mythicals up to E5, but they tend to be, if they're a Mythical like this guy, the ones that don't have skills, they tend to be slightly easier to get a hold of via trading. You'll usually find someone that's just randomly got like hundreds of orbs of these sorts of dragons somewhere and then you just keep trying to find those people. They can be difficult, but you can get there eventually. I used a few jokers, admittedly, on this one, which normally I wouldn't do, but I'm only doing it because of upcoming Mythical update, but... Lovely, lovely Roxy over here. Cannot wait to use them. And I have put a couple of perks on them just for now, just for the short term. I can always swap them off if I need to. I can dump them. It's only one of each. Um, but Roxy's been helping us in Light Arena when they weren't being empowered, of course. But I thought I'd give you an update because we have Roxy up at E5. We've got uh, Duo Dive at E5. We have Michonne that's going to be at E5 very soon as well. So in our next Empower... It probably will end up being Michonne that I go for, um, I imagine, because we do need 800 total, but we need a few more Jokers. Not very many more, but a few more. And then we will have E5 Michonne, and at least then we've got a good set of dragons coming up. But anyway, that was my first update of today. Of course, we do also have the Revenge Run Runner event. And in this, we have the Moxie Dragon. Which I think is a kind of cool looking dragon. It says that Moxie has Turbo Shock. I don't know if that's actually correct or not. If so, then that is just a free dragon with a skill, which is kind of cool. Uh, but in terms of this revenge run, one thing that I will note is that we do have, you know, the item rewards. We have insignias, corrupted insignias as usual, gems. Runner events are very giving, XL food boxes. But this event is three days, 21 hours long. And it is another case where... We have the grid event on right now so i highly recommend not spending your runner event currency right now reason being that this roulette wheel for instance it drops grid coins and then we also have grid coins as rewards down here so i highly suggest not doing this event yet so you can collect your um you know your flight stamps from each reset you should definitely still do that but just collect your flight stamp resets and then you can use the rest of the currency that you pick up from this in the upcoming maze event instead of the grid event it's always like that but i always get players that don't understand why i say don't do your runner event right now but you know Collect all of your items, like feeding dragons is super easy. We can go and feed someone up right now, like, I don't know, Hansel. We can just feed him up a few times, get our reset items as well. Like, whatever, I'll take him to 29 just because why not? We get that. And then the only other thing that we have to do, of course, is the breeding. Any breeding or hatching quests are the same as usual. They are a pain because normally it's easiest to use, you know, terror dragons if we're doing breeding and hatching. But I do have a few dragons that I actually need to get hatched. Like, wonderful high celestial over here. Do I have any other habitats? Oh, I do. Lucky me. I have, like, zero space on my island. So whenever I have a free habitat, it's actually pretty cool. But high celestial, I think, is a very cool-looking dragon. Like, that is a very big boy. A very big baby. Um, but we will feed them up just so that they can get into their adult form. Oh, I love the teenage form of celestial as well. How cute. It looks like some sort of Dark Souls boss, and that's why I like it. If you remember the original Dark Souls Hydras, but anyway, that is me getting off topic. The other dragons that we got here, we have your boy Fake Entrance. My goodness, I wanted this dragon for so long. Fake Entrance was like one of my favorites for a very long time. But we finally got them here. I guess we'll throw them in this habitat just for now. But I love Fake Entrance so much, just as a concept or an idea. So we've got him. Then we got our other boy here, but first I'm going to do this breed. We're going to take this one out, and then we've only got two more breeds that we have to do. So, well, one more breed, sorry, that we have to do. So we could just do terror breeding for now, realistically. Uh, we do actually have high tectonic as a breedable, which is quite a cool one to have as a breedable. Um, I do also have my time skips. One day, one hour. That is not what we wanted. That is a shame. 
Uh, but because I do have time skips, it means that I can maybe do a couple of random breeds and then I can just skip it with time skips and then we can get that done for that reset. So I at least sometimes try and go for, you know, a lucky breed, see if we get it. Another one day timer. Oh, that is so unfortunate, two of them in a row. But it, it happens, it can happen. Um, I just wanted to see if we could throw a random, a random try at a high tectonic, but not today, maybe next time. Uh, the other dragon um, that we do have today is your wonderful, wonderful Barragard, because I did actually trade for this guy. And Barragard, of course, is like the Walking Dead dragons. They have that guard ability. They are basically the Walking Dead dragons with one less skill. So technically you could say that they're worse, but the thing is they have different sets of elements and having a specific guard ability on like their first element is quite important. Um, and can make them useful in certain arenas. So your boy Barragard here is finally around. I don't know who I would be summoning next. We have quite a few legends that need to be summoned at this stage, like new ones. Like I've got Arcana Fool that we can get, Conquest and Plasma, I need one more trade for of each. Quantum Flash, I've got that too. So yeah, there's uh, quite a few options. But you know, I'll decide that whenever we get the next summon happy hour. But those are my currently new dragon things that are ongoing or upcoming dragon things that I have planned. The other thing that is a very cool thing that we have today, same as yesterday, is Sinful Chan Hollow, of course. And, uh, you know, since vampires are going to become 200 orb dragons, this is interesting uh, that we have, say, Sinful in this, this hollow. Because, you know, technically vampires, once the mythical update drops, will have, or well, they'll be much harder to get in general because you're not going to be able to summon them so easily because at the moment all that you have to do to get a sinful is just find one trade of sinful's orbs from someone and then just summon it during summon happy hour using jokers but once a new hu update hits boy are you going to have a painful time trying to get your hands on sinful i think probably the easiest way to get sinful and blood god is going to be finishing off the other vampire collection but uh, even then vampires are still going to be a pain but we still have their orbs coming in ads right now which is interesting. I don't know if that's going to change once the mythical update hits. But as of right now, uh, you know, we can still get their orbs in the ads. And then, of course, from that, we can get lots of bonus. What will be quite valuable. Oh, 12 gems. You know, in this instance, we have Sinful, who I would love to get a duplicate of just for trading purposes, because I've already got a max Sinful. You know, we could get Joker orbs. We could get these perks. But, you know, I've already gotten a 12 gem drop. I know I spent five. Should I just... I might just claim. I think I'm just going to run away with this one before I spend any more gems. Yes, was that a weak decision? It was a very weak one. But, you know, I, I, got, I got the feeling we were going to run into a, another wizard at any moment. But you should definitely still give the hollow a go if you really want to get your hands on Simful. It's just because I've already got a maxed one, so I don't really care for this hollow too much. But if you didn't have Simful, I would say that you could possibly consider spending some gems to try and get them just because, yeah, the dragon is uh, not going to be an easy one to get going forward. But anyway, let's open a silver corrupted chest while we're here. We get... Oh! Do I... I don't think I have corrupted C. So you know what? That is actually pretty good. I will consider that a win. Uh, we do have the new dragon TV coins as well. So we will, in this coin collection potentially have some more vampires not vampires uh well there is a vampire but karmas that we can get um so we'll see what we get from this one probably nothing as usual but anything is better than nothing and then out the bronze chest we oh tasty that is a tasty drop right there i will take it anytime you get a times 10 insignia drop out of the bronze chest that is a an ultra w because the other options are like 30 gems, 10 orbs of another dragon, a couple of perks. Honestly, the times 10 or the heroic jokers are actually pretty good, but I would say the times 10 insignias just to add to your total count is actually really nice. So, you know, those openings weren't too bad. We don't have the major ones that we're opening right now, but I will take what we just got. But anyway, in terms of the actual runner event, again, it's going to be the same as all runner events. Just make sure that you are doing your resets for your flight stamps, but don't spend your currency unless you are really trying hard in this grid event. But I'll be honest, I didn't even really play the puzzle event. I've not really been logging in the last couple of days. I've just been too busy, too sick, too exhausted um, 
So grid event for me is not a focus, so I'm just going to really ignore that portion of the event. Of course, I'll still do the grid event. We'll pick up some of the chests on our way through, uh, but I've not been collecting my currency as you would normally expect. Maybe I'll go for a couple of the heart chests, but again, I'm not going to go too crazy with them. Even our quests, I've not been logging in on time, but even if you're not logging in like super diligently and that, and you're sort of chilling like I am, you should still at least give it a try to get as much currency as you can, pick up as many event items as you can, but you will get bonus free stuff. So that's the reason I play this game. It's because even if I do have a lot of other things going on, it's not like I have to be logging into Dragon City every two minutes. I know that the first thing someone's going to say is, oh, well, what about during heroic races? It's the same thing during heroic races. At least if we're talking about the heroic races that aren't like Heine Korea race. Because during Heine Korea race, if you wanted to grind to that lap to get all the bonus orbs, yeah, that was super grind heavy, super gem heavy, super grind heavy. That was painful. But like the last race that we got for High Aurosphere, that was an old fashioned race. And you have like, what, five days of event login leeway when you're doing those. So um, I really like them because during those heroic races, which may be the upcoming heroic race that we have for the new dragon, which I have seen her, the one for Valentine's Day. Uh, but for that dragon, it does seem like it's, there's a chance we might have the old format again, in which case we'll have a lot of days of leeway once again. And that is the sort of heroic race that I like because it means that I can just not log in for three days if I want to and still get the dragon. So, uh, you know, that's why I don't freak out in this game too much. It's a game that you can play if you've got other stuff going on. Like League of Legends, you've got to be logging in every two minutes and that is not fun. Uh, if you want to, you know, get the highest ranks, you want to be the best play that there is. Same with like Overwatch, Valorant, any of those games. But uh, I just prefer the chilling method with some games. Other games, yeah, I would want to hard grind, but I'm not going to hard grind in a mobile pay to win game gacha like this one. That is just me. But anyway, I guess that is me rambling for now. But best of luck. I hope that you get everything that you want out of these events. Just make sure that you're playing them properly. Wizards Hollow, I hope you get your hands on a free Sinful, because who doesn't love Sinful Chen? I do. It's the reason why he'll be the only dragon of mine to ever go to level 70. All of the rest will remain at level 69. Uh, but my profile one day will be full of level 69s very shortly. Duo Destruct will be one of them. Um, but I do need to get Joy Dive leveled up because Joy Dive is not appearing on here, which is quite sad considering that they are E5. So I think it's just because of the way that profiles work. Obviously, if we leveled them up a bit, then it'd be fine. But I need to get Joy Destruct up, Joy Dive up, and then the rest of the boys. Yeah, we can take those up whenever we want to to E5. As long as we can get like at least two, two rows of gold soon, I'll be happy because then it'll just look pretty. You know what I mean? But anyway... For now, I am going to skedaddle, so I appreciate you joining me here today. Have fun, and for now... <laughs>